this place in Tomoru, when we have the southly wind, that's the time it's uh, very rough. And uh, that's when the thing started eroding. When I was in class four, I went around the grave. But right now it's opposite. I'm going behind the grave. Yeah, climate change has affected us. Even the soil, when we plant, it was not like before when we plant, we have healthy crops. Now it, it's dying. So what has eaten through? I grew up in Navua and we used to swim out just, you know, with the amount of land the, just out here. And uh, it's shocking to come back after 28 years and see that the amount of land uh, and, uh, has washed away, eh? eroded from uh, climate change. Small island developing states are among the worst affected by sea level rise, and Fiji is no exception. With more than 300 islands that are spread out over more than 18,000 square kilometers, Fiji's population is one of the most vulnerable on the planet. The coastal settlement of Tomoru is about 60 minutes away from the capital city. For years, the people here have looked on as the sea mercilessly took away the ancestral graves, which are now surrounded by the sea. Yeah, but when I got married, when I was married, we used to walk around the grave. There was a big uh, Utu tree, Utuai. Right out there, right there, and then we used to go around. Before, like we on the beach side, all we only know that on Easter's we have spring tides, but now it's almost every second week spring tide. Every time six o'clock high tide, it's spring, and water is just overflowing. This was all covered with water, right up right there, water from the back. And the coconuts all floating. And mm. how else does it affect you guys? I said, well, we can plant for anything. Mm. We can. Before we still have our cassava plantation, never run out of cassava and things. And that's it. We are affected that we can't plant anything. Where was your plantation? Right over here. Plantation right over there. Mm. Plantation. We had a plantation there and we had a bure. Mm. Yeah, now Saka. Professor Rajib Shaw is one of the lead authors of the IPCC Working Group 2 report about adaptation and specializes on small island developing states. When it comes to the climate change, I think we need a more sense of urgency rather than just thinking it as a uh, not an immediate priority. We are thinking, okay, we will be doing something in the line of next 30 years, 50 years, 70 years down the line, we'll be doing something. So the sense of urgency in action is extremely, extremely important. My name is Thomas Dunn, and this is my settlement. This is where my, my dad and our ancestors were brought up here. You know, climate change has affected us, really affected us. We can tell the deep and see the, the land has been eaten a lot. We asked for aid and the government said that they'll make a seawall for us. They said, but it's still on the pipeline. But we don't know when. When will we have the seawall done? So we'll just have to hope for the best. My grandfather and my dad and all my uncles the time we did not have tanks, they drank from the well. Drink. In the small islands, there will be 
a major issue on the fresh water availability of the fresh water due to change in the precipitation pattern the rainfall pattern and uh, also like possibly use overuse of the groundwater where there are fresh water availability so fresh water issue for the small island developing states will be a major problem and uh, this is possibly in, even in the globally i think the small island developing states will be the most impacted when it comes to the fresh water availability this how much we treasure water <laughs> we keep it in buckets and bottles we contain them after boiling this is our well and we we ration our water and we bath in the well here's the well Oh yeah, sometimes when there's drought, we suffer. There's no water. But here we treasure water. Water is gold here to us. Yeah, this is our new grave uh, site. Because after that one gone in the sea, so we got a new one. But uh, the problem is this place all salt water around. So we just bury people when it's low tide. You can't bury people when it's high tide. The chiefly village of Vewatuloa is part of the Namosi province and residence of the Tui Namosi, the high chief of Namosi. Around 200 people live here. Uh, Now, a few issues which the science says that tropical cyclone, tropical cyclone in terms of both severity and frequency, it will increase and these actually are already superimposing the already the sea level rise impact. It will also have some very strong impact on the critical infrastructure, especially the lifelines, as well as also the agriculture and the food production of the countries. <laughs> We need to possibly 
depend very strongly on what we call the ecosystem based adaptation um, uh, processes as i mentioned that there are there will be and there are already some changes in the ecosystems in the coastal area but um, we need to we can't just make say sort of uh, hard infrastructure just to protect everything we possibly need to depend on more blue and green infrastructure and focusing more on these ecosystem based issues uh, both in the mountain area forest area as well as in the coastal ecosystem because staying in suva staying in interiors you won't feel anything regarding climate change but staying in alan you'll see the sea level rise before my father my grandfather they used to go out fish and now once they come back they don't have any fish now before it used to be plenty so in lakemba uh, what we have been doing so far is uh, in terms of climate change we have been planting corals uh, a natural type of uh, sea barrier a reef and apart from that we have been doing mangrove we are building uh, sea walls because these days the water level before it used to be very low and now it's just pushing it up we have done lot of awareness now it's time to act together Young people are now increasingly becoming aware of the need to protect their natural environment and are becoming climate change activists at a very young age. We just hope it will get better in the future. We just have to pray hard. Every end of uh, the year during Christmas we used to go to my village and uh, every Christmas we can see changes. And my advice to the people near the village and the people near the river just to be prepared because climate change is really happening so fast the the mangroves they act as nursery to fish and they also act as our windbreakers for coastal villages also today we planted uh, 3000 mangroves here for the that side that was our first mangrove planting december 1 and we planted 2000 mangroves and we also had our second mangrove planting over there where my suva park tambore we also planted 3000 mangroves i'm willing to write a book about uh, the ecological footstep um it's about uh, how the adults of uh, this generation messed it up for us and how the kids of uh, my generation have to clean it up and we may not have the privileges that the adults today have